Um, so the, the compliance rate can be low, depending on the residual effects from the stroke that the patient has had. Um, it's, uh, it's unclear if the treatment of sleep disordered breathing actually reduces the risk of having a stroke. We think that, yes, it, it does, but we don't know for sure that the, those randomized, randomized controlled trials haven't you know, been done yet. So we randomize, randomize you to you know, treatment, no treatment, and see if you have a stroke yet. So it's not been done. Um, okay, so back up here. And there's, a, there's actually a study going on, uh, I, I think now, so when I was reviewing the literature, this said that it was July 2012, and there's this SAS Care 1 and 2 study that's uh, being done in Switzerland, and there, it's an open observational multi-center study. Now, it's not a randomized control study, but they're looking at acute ischemic stroke and TIAs. TIA is transient ischemic attack, and they're looking at the use of CPAP short-term and then long-term, up to two years. And they're looking at different markers and trying to find out if, there's, if, if things have improved. And so the jury's out. I don't know about that study yet. I haven't gotten the results. So let's move to arrhythmias. Um, <clears throat> nocturnal arrhythmias, as the last speaker uh, just uh, told you, it, it's prevalent. 50% of, of patients will have some arrhythmia, whether it's just PVCs or something bad, but they're having something. Um, it increases, your, your risk for, for arrhythmia increases the higher your apnea hypopnea index is and, and the higher or the lower your O2 desats go. Um, most common are listed there. 17-fold increase um, in odds of having an arrhythmia uh, after sleep disorder breathing is diagnosed. Central sleep apneas are often uh, associated with AFib. Prevalence of undiagnosed sleep apnea in patients who got a pacemaker in one study was 59%. I thought that was kind of interesting, that maybe we should be recognizing patients more before they need to go for their pacemaker, you know, like the guy I was just telling you about. Well, is treating his sleep apnea and then ultimately working with him to get him to lose weight to get back, back down to a BMI of... 25, if I can, you know, is that really what we should be doing instead of putting a pacemaker in the guy? I don't know. I don't know, but these are the kind of questions that we're asking ourselves. Um, and that's why I'm following this guy, and the cardiologist said, you know, I don't need to put a pacemaker in him yet. Um, and also, uh, sleep disorder breathing was seen in 68% of patients with uh, AV block. Um, Post-op AFib is more likely in uh, obstructive sleep apnea patients, and hospitals across the nation now have instituted a screening. I think they usually use the Berlin questionnaire or some other perturbation of that to screen patients to see if they're at high risk for sleep apnea or not. And then that sort of automatically triggers usually like a tech or somebody coming up and saying, you know, okay, you were screened for high risk, we should get you into the clinic or we should get you a sleep study because what they want to do is prevent perioperative complications. You know, what are those perioperative complications? Stroke, heart attack, arrhythmia, yada, yada, yada. And so hospitals don't want those bad things happening in their hospitals because then their numbers aren't good. But also it's good care. <laughs> it's good care to, to not have bad things happen perioperatively. Um, Fifty percent of AFib patients at cardioversion are likely to have OSA, and I think I alluded to that anyway when they were the, the pacemaker patients, a lot of them had a high risk of OSA, but this is looking at just patients going undergoing cardioversion. So, so you put the paddles on and you shock them out of their, their unstable rhythm. Um, atrial fibrillation in general is not an unstable rhythm per se unless they're hypotensive or if their heart rate is well above 150 and they're symptomatic. Chest pain, shortness of breath, all of that. Um, the progression of arrhythmias in sleep apnea, hypoxemia, transmural pressure gradients, uh, systemic inflammation. See, you see a pattern here, don't you? Uh, sympath sympathetic activation, pressure surges, Cardiac vasal uh, activation, vagal activation. Um, so you put somebody on CPAP for their OSA, their cardiac variability improves. 
their risk for arrhythmia decreases. They have a lower recurrence of AFib after electrical cardioversion in one study. Um, they have 58% decrease in PVCs, so it helps. My guy doesn't have his 15 second pause anymore. Um, atrial overdrive pacing. So this is putting a pacemaker in and initially, so uh, I think we're probably gonna see more on this topic as well. So uh, initial reports showed that when, when you put a pacemaker in somebody, their sleep apnea got better, not on CPAP, just by putting their pacemaker, just by putting a pacemaker in. Um, that was in 2002. And then there were a few studies that came out sort of 2005, six, seven, something like that, that said, nah, I don't, we don't know about that. We don't know if that's true. Um, and then I just came across a paper uh, this past week, it was June of, of this year, that said, you know, if you went, underwent a radio ablation therapy, they said that your AHI decreased by 10. Yeah. So, you know, maybe there is um, evidence to support that we should be either maybe putting a pacer in them or, or, a, uh, or giving them radio ablation therapy. And, um, you know, that would help. I mean, especially if their apnea hypopnea index is 70, you know, treat their AFib, give, uh, uh, radio ablate them if they, if they can't be under control with their AFib with a medicine, and then, you know, put them on CPEP after that. Um, I'm just going to sort of gloss over the last couple of slides here because I think I only have uh, 10 minutes left. So uh, cardiovascular disease in, in, or, or, or uh, atherosclerotic disease and sleep disordered breathing, uh, there's a two-time uh, increase in, in a couple of papers, uh, primarily in men. Um, we see that patients who haven't had heart attacks yet can have what's called coronary artery calcifications, and that's sort of a uh, a sign that they are developing coronary artery disease, even though they haven't had their heart attack yet. So if, if, you, if you leave sleep apnea untreated, uh, especially if it's severe, and in men at 10 years, there is a significant increase in fatal and non-fatal uh, cardiovascular events. Uh, we see ST depression, we see nocturnal angina, we see, um, this is just another one that looked at a five-year endpoint of death, MI, cardiovascular disease uh, with, with patients who have sleep disordered breathing, and they found that um, in men, 28% of them had it compared to a control of 16%, and in women, 20% uh, had something bad happen compared to 14% controls. 